Hey guys, this is Jim K in 4YCD and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. You've been to a ham fest. You knew that you needed some attenuators so you could hook up things to your Nano VNA or your Tiny SA or in this case a spectrum analyzer and you bought attenuators and you bought them from this guy and you got a really good price on them. But how do you know that they're what they say they are? Do you just hook this up to your nano vna and hope that it's really a 30 db attenuator how do you find out what you would use an attenuator for is to step down the power level to your test device now in this i'm using a spectrum analyzer you could do the same thing with a tiny sa or a nano vna depending on what you're trying to use all these devices have a fairly low threshold of how much power they can take in before the magic smoke escapes so for example on this it only will take a maximum of a 20 dBm signal at 50 volts DC. Anything above that, and we'll let the magic out. So we don't want to do that. So to get around that, we have to put in attenuators. I bought some attenuators. I've got several of them here. Some examples, I have this guy, which has got an end connector on both ends. And it's metal, and it's stout, and it feels like it must be real ham equipment. But I don't know... How much attenuation this provides and at what frequencies this might be great for uhf but it's terrible at hf frequencies so we need to find that out this probably will take more power into it than this will this is probably only rated for five or ten watts but it does say that it's a 30 db attenuator awful small so that kind of tells me it isn't going to take a whole lot of power maybe five watts this is another one I believe this is a 30 dB attenuator if I remember right this is bigger than this guy so this must take more power I can't tell you how to figure out how much power it can take when you're transmitting into something like this you're dissipating your RF energy and it will dissipate as heat you know would I run hundred watts into this probably not would I run hundred watts into this thing sure I would this is the cell wave that you've seen in a bunch of previous videos and this is an inductive RF tap. The signal goes in here, and then this taps the circuit by inductive means. It's just close to the business part, and it picks up the RF so we can read the signal without the power. This is also rated for 200 watts. This is a dummy load as well. I don't know specifically what these will attenuate, how much attenuation of our signal, of our input signal strength, these will knock down. This is sold as 40 dB. Do I know that? No, not exactly. So we need to find out. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set up some tests and we'll look at each of these devices on the spectrum analyzer. So let me get it set up and I'll be right back. There is the attenuation at the HF band at three randomly selected spots. And I've got one more marker I could drop in there somewhere, but this gives us a good idea. As a matter of fact, let's put in marker four so there is our markers and what we've got is 80 meters then we have 40 meters then we have 20 meters and we have 10 meters you can see how here down at the lower end of the hf band we have a lot more attenuation and if you look at marker number one it's telling us the frequency it's on and the amplitude and we're showing minus 78 to minus 80 db um, at the 80 meter band so considerably more than 40 db if we look at marker number four the next marker from left to right that's our 40 meter band and he's showing 70 minus 75 db and if we go up to marker number two which is actually our third marker we're showing 14.24 and we're at minus 70 db and then up here at 10 meters marker number three and he is showing if you look across here minus 63 db across the hf band that's pretty impressive with those numbers you could hook up your 100 watt radio and run it through this thing and tap it without a problem and and run it straight into your spectrum analyzer off this tap because we're getting that much that much attenuation 100 watts is 50 dBm. We've got well more than 50 dBm. All right, let's jump to another band real quick. There we go, covering from below VHF, below ham VHF, 
all the way up to 500 megahertz above ham UHF. Here is our table of attenuation. So you can see down here at VHF 1, 2 meter band, I've got 50 dB of attenuation. And as we go up, 46 dB of attenuation, 42 dB, and up at UHF frequencies, I've still got 40 dB of attenuation. This is probably saying 40 dB at UHF frequencies on this particular thing but uh, we have greater than that at lower frequencies and that's typically what you're going to see in any of these attenuators let me jump out and let's change out attenuators and let's try this guy next okay so here is this particular attenuator and these are the same bands as in the last clip uh, we've got from vhf at 144 up to uhf at 441 with a couple of data points in the middle where our markers are and you can see here that this is a whole lot less attenuation at UHF frequencies and VHF. So we're getting about 18 dB at 2 meters, and then 16 dB, and then 15 dB, and 16 dB, and it's all close enough. I'd call it 16 dB on all of them. That's this particular guy. Let's see what this looks like on HF. So let's jump our frequencies. So once again, if we look at our chart, we see what kind of attenuation we have. And obviously, the attenuation here is way better down at HF range than it is at VHF and UHF. Remember, same device, this exact device, but at U, uh, VHF to UHF frequencies, we only had a 15 to 18 dB of attenuation. Okay, I've got this little guy on, and this is labeled as a 30 dB attenuator. So we're looking at HF bands here, similar to before. I've got us set to 80, 40, 20, and 10. And I'd call that about right. Minus 29 dB of attenuation pretty much across the entire uh, the entire HF range. And the line, as you can see, is beautifully flat. Now, if we go up to 2 meters with this guy, so you can see, again, our line is still really flat up at UHF frequencies. So that is just VHF and UHF frequencies. That is beautiful. So this is a great attenuator. It absolutely 30 dB all day. As you can see, those values are just about the same that we had down in the HF range. Let's take a look at this chunky monkey here and uh, go there next. Okay, so we've got this guy. And I didn't remember whether this was 30 or 40 dB of attenuation. I, I do believe this is going to be more power than that little small one. And so if we look at our bands here this is uh, two meter up through 70 centimeter 40 db across that range so that's pretty good when you get an attenuator it will have a range of frequencies that it's viable across you know you may have something that operates all the way up into the microwave range you may have something that doesn't go that high we saw with the uh, with the cell wave with this big honker that um, the attenuation went down as the frequency went up so let's take a look at this guy down in HF frequencies. And again, we're still showing 40 dB of attenuation across. You can do this same kind of thing with a VNA. This is just a good way to check your ham, your ham fest finds. And these tests can be done with a nano VNA. Um, it will absolutely show you your, um, it's an S21 measurement, S21, excuse me, S21 measurement in the nano VNA and that comes back as return loss, which is the same thing as negative, negative gain or attenuation. Guys, have a great day. Thank you for watching. Make sure you click the like and subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. All that stuff is in the dingus down below so you'll get notified whenever I publish any new videos. Thanks, y'all. Have a good one.